John 14, John chapter number 14, going to preach to you something very familiar. I don't know why I just couldn't get my mind off of John 14 the last few days, and I thought about people dying. We, we've heard about a lot of people dying this year, haven't we? And uh, people that we know, people that's been in our families, uh, friends, and the thought that I had was, I wonder how many of them died lost. And uh, it breaks my heart to think that any died lost. But in a church like this, in a church this size or half this size, I, I, would, I would not say that everybody in here is saved. I'd like to say that. I really, I really would. I'd really like to say I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that everyone in here that occupies a place, a seat, I would like to say I know that they're going to go to heaven and be with Jesus forever and ever. But I don't think that's the truth. You say, well, preacher, who are you talking to? I don't know. You have to decide that. But how does a person get to heaven? John chapter 14 <clears throat> Jesus is talking to his disciples, and he says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there ye may be also. Verse number four, And whither I go ye know, and the way ye you know, Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. How can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Brother Bill uh, mentioned that verse this morning in his Sunday school class. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Our Father, please help us. In the next few minutes, help our hearts, our minds, not to be on the things of this world, not to be on politics, not to be on the government, not to be on sports, not to be on anything but Thee. We ask, dear God, that You'll help us this morning. Search our hearts. Lord, the Apostle Paul said, examine yourselves whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves how that Christ Jesus is in you, except ye be reprobates. So, Father, I pray that all of us now will take a self-examination of what is to be said in the next few minutes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In 1965, <clears throat> in the daily Chicago news, now think about how long ago this has been, what, 55 years, right? Um, in the Chicago Daily News, there was a survey taken, and that survey was taken in a town called Marion, Ohio. Some of you know where that's at. Uh, some of you may be from that place. But in this survey, 88 people out of 100 thought that they would go to heaven. 88 people. Now look, this is back, this is not today. This is back in the day where we think that maybe some people had it together just a little bit. <laughs> Amen. But I'm telling you today, it's a lot different than what it was 55 years ago. Now, now keep in mind, this is 55 years ago. 88 people out of 100 thought they were going to go to heaven. In... On June the 16th, 1965, this, this uh, survey was conducted in Marion, Ohio, by 66 people. And in approximately one hour, 662 people were contacted, and they were simply asked this question, how does a person go to heaven? How does a person go to heaven? If I thought that I could have done this this morning, I would have given you a, a slip of paper and asked you that question. How does a person go to heaven? I would have had you to answer it anonymously. I would have had about four ushers to go back with plates and collected them up, and, and I could take them one by one and read the answers. 
I promise you, they would not all be the same answers. Three people said you have to be baptized. Four people said I don't care. 23 said keep the Ten Commandments. 27 said I'm too busy. 28 said I'm not interested. 30 said I refuse to answer. 58 said you have to be good. 64 people gave miscellaneous answers such as I don't understand you. I speak German. One person said, be kind to women. Another one said, beats me. Another one said, ask Art Linkletter. You remember him, don't you? One person said, up the golden stairs. Another one said, nobody knows. Another one said, that's a silly question. And uh, they, they said, I don't want to go to the place and, and so forth. And then there was 77 said, I don't know. 99 said, by doing good work, such as being honest, helping people, obeying parents, living a decent life. I wonder if that was your answer. No. 23, only 23, only 23 out of 662 people said, by receiving Jesus Christ, as personal Savior and Lord. If there were 662 people interviewed today, contacted today, and asked the question, how do you go to heaven? You may have three people that get it right. How does one go to heaven? Jesus said, first of all, he said in verse number 14, there was a concern there. He said, let not your heart be troubled. Verse number one says, let not your heart be troubled. Look at verse number 27. Verse 27, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. He's about to leave them. Jesus is about to go to a cross and die up on that cross, shed his blood for the sins of the whole world. And he's about to go back to his father who... Uh, who he had one time fellowship with. He had left the father's presence, the father's house. And now he's on this earth in this story, in this setting. And he's about to leave. He's telling, he's telling his disciples, I'm going to leave. I'm going to go away. Let not your heart be troubled. And then here's what he said. And I preached on this a few weeks ago, but he said, you believe in God. You know what they did, but they just couldn't see. We, we mentioned that the other day. It's hard to believe in something that you can't see. But Jesus asked us to do that. By faith, he says. So he said, uh, Jesus would say, believe, believe, believe also in me. Now, again and again and again, he would tell them, but they would never understand. In John chapter 10 and verse number 30, he said, I and my father are one. He said also in another place, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So what Jesus was saying, you believe in God, but believe in me too, because I and the Father are one. Right. And, and so they, they, he had a concern that they were just going to, um, that they, they were just going to kind of not go off the deep end, but just kind of be troubled and worried about all this life. He's getting ready to leave. And then he promises to send the comforter. We already seen this. So he said, believe in me also. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Now, there's a lot of people believe in God. They just don't believe in Jesus. And it's already been pointed out, you, you're not going to go to God unless you go through Jesus. So he says, you believe also in me. He had already told them that he, about the resurrection and the life in John chapter 11. He says, I'm with you at this time on this earth. That's what he's actually telling them. He would not leave them without any comfort. He would send the comforter. You all know the story. In verses 15, in fact, in verse number 15, look what he says. If you love me, keep my commandments and I will pray the Father and he will, he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. So he would not leave them without comfort. So Jesus was concerned. He gave them a commandment, believe also in me. And then I, I find this strange, but he's going to communicate with them about a, a, a place. By the way, most, of, most people that we talk to 
or most, can I use this term, quote unquote, soul winners, the first thing they ask you is, are you going to go to heaven when you die? Well, my question is, are you going to go to be with Jesus when you die? <laughs> because Jesus is what makes heaven heaven. Without Jesus, heaven is just another place. I would rather be with Jesus in a dungeon than anywhere else in this world, than without Jesus in the finest mansion. To be with Jesus is really all that matters. Now look what he says here. In verse number two, he's going to bring up a place. He said, in my father's house, that's a place, right? In my father's house are many mansions. You know, in this place that Jesus talks about, my father's house, he said, in that house are many mansions. Now, if you have one of those Bibles that says, in my father's house are many rooms, that's not correct. Amen. A room and a mansion are two different things. Wow. That is a big difference, isn't it? A mansion normally has many rooms. A room has a room. That's it. So he says, in my father's house are many mansions, and I, I'm glad that Jesus is honest about this. He said, if it were not so, I would have told you. I would have told you. And so in my father's house, that's a place. There are many mansions. But Jesus, the Bible says, uh, I have told, I go to prepare a place for you. Now, I'm glad he said that because when we get to heaven, by the way, all of us are going to a place do you know that the rich man in hell talked about a place where he was? He was in a place of torment. He was in a place of fire. He was, a place, he was in a place of memory. So a place is important. Do you know your body is a place? Your body is the place of your soul and spirit. When you die, your soul and your spirit leaves the place that you dwelt in from the very beginning since you were born. And it goes somewhere. Your spirit and your soul either goes to be with Jesus Christ or it goes to a place called hell. Yeah. But we're made for a place. We're made. Look, when you get, when, when you get to, if you die in Christ, if you die in Christ, you're just not floating around in a spirit and all that stuff. You're not, by the way, I was talking to Brother David over there and, uh, and he works in a prison and he said, he said, there are 23 different religions that they have to accommodate in the prison. And I'm thinking 23. And I know, there, I know what some of them are, but he named a couple I had no idea. He said some of them worship four and some of these mystic gods and all kinds of stuff. And very interesting. I wish I could have talked to him a little bit longer about this. But man, I you know I used to watch this stuff as a cartoon on cartoons, <laughs> Thor and and uh, all that stuff, Superman, Batman. They probably got that kind of religion. You can always start your own religion, by the way. Do you know that? But he was talking about that, and no wonder this world is confused. Back fifty-five years ago, there were not twenty-three different religions that were accommodated in a prison. Man, they have grown and grown and grown and grown. And guess what? The one that is looked down upon the most and is ridiculed the most, Christianity. Yeah, you can't say anything about this fellow's. By the way, they say you have to tolerate. I don't have to tolerate it. I don't believe it. I don't go for it. God's against it. Why should I have to tolerate it? Why don't you tolerate mine? <laughs> Amen. Good toleration. All right. But in my father's house, there's a place. Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a place. Jesus promised that where he is, verse 3, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there, that where I am. That's a place. Where I am, there ye may be also. By the way, the Bible says, <clears throat> if two or three are gathered, Jesus said this, if two or three are gathered together in my name, there will I be in their midst, in the midst of them. Now, I think that so far we have lifted up Jesus. Guess where, he's at? where he is? He's right here. He's right here. Do you think he's with Thor? <laughs> no, I don't think so. You say, well, you shouldn't talk about another man's religion. That's our problem. That is our problem. 
We, we are afraid of offending people. Look, if the gospel offends folks, then they just have to be offended. I'm not, look, I'm a nice guy. You ask my wife. Don't, don't ask anybody else, just ask my wife. I'm a, I'm a nice guy. But I'm going to tell you what, when somebody says you go to heaven through the baptismal waters or you go to heaven by this, and if it's not lined up with the Bible, I say you're wrong. Right. You're wrong. So he's going to communicate with them about a place. And then I want to show you something else. Then Jesus is, and it, to me, this is the most important thing he said in these first six verses. He's going to give them a clarification. In verse number four, he, sa he says, and whether I go, you know, in the way you know, Thomas said to him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, how can we know the way? And here it is. Jesus <clears throat> said unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now, Jesus is the way to go. He's the way to go. Acts chapter 4 and verse number 12 says, There is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. There is no Baptist name, no Presbyterian name, no Buddhist name, no Episcopalian name. It is by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that a man goes to heaven. There is no other name, the Bible says. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse number 11 says, For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Christ Jesus. You're pretty dogmatic about that, aren't you, preacher? Yeah, I had a first grade teacher that was pretty dogmatic in math. When she said, what is two plus two? And I wrote down five. She said, you're absolutely wrong. I said, well, you're, you're hurting my feelings. <laughs> well, I didn't say back that. I didn't know anything about the feelings and all that stuff. And, But she was dogmatic about that. Two plus two. My daddy used to tell me, he said, you, he said, you didn't say equals. We used to have our multiplication table, our addition, all that. We would say one plus one equals two. Two plus two equals four. Two. Yeah, four. <laughs> and, and daddy used to say, that daddy would tell me, and I don't remember saying this, but he told me, my mom did too. She said, you would say two plus two, it was four. <laughs> you would not say equals. She said you would say one plus one, it was two. Two plus two, it was four. I said, I did not. He said, yes, you did too. <laughs> In fact, there's a lot of things you did that we were not telling people. <laughs> Bible says, for there is one God and one mediator between God and men. Not the Baptist religion, not any religion. It is the man, Christ Jesus. Do you know that in heaven right now, seated at the right hand of the Father is a man. And his name is Jesus Christ. When he rose from the grave, he didn't raise as a spirit. He rose bodily as a man. He, he, look, he came to this earth as a man. He lived on this earth as a man without sin. He went to a cross and died upon that cross as a man, as a God man, and as a human man. Right. And he shed his precious blood. And he, they were buried. He was buried. On the third day, he arose again as a man. And when we get to heaven... We're going to bow our unworthy faces and our unworthy knees and our unworthy, and we're going to worship the man, Christ Jesus. Amen. I can't wait. By the way, we can worship him right now as the man, Christ Jesus. And so he's going to clarify, Jesus is the way to go. Jesus is the way to go. Now, how many of you men, I know you ladies never, ha this never happened to you ladies, but how many of you men have ever got lost? And had to ask directions. Ask for directions. How many of you are not admitting it? You're, you're driving and you don't know what. You know what? I, I'm not all big for technology. I, I carry a flip phone. You know that. But I'm so thankful for GPS. Look, somebody gave me a brand new road map here. You know, when the. 
GPS thing come out there, and I'm, th I'm thinking, what do I need that for? I got GPS. <laughs> but here's what I'm saying. I'm saying it, you, you're in a bad way when you get lost and you don't know where to go. When somebody asks me, and if I have time, when somebody asks me, uh, preacher, how do I get to uh, the post office in Inverness? And I can, you know, I can tell them, I said, look, I said, I'll tell you what, I'm going that way. You just follow me. And that is so much easier than for me to try to tell them, and they may get confused and everything. You know what religion does? It tells you the way to God, to, the way to God is this way and that way, and somebody else says, no, it's not. It's this way and that way. And I'm just going to tell you, Jesus said, follow me. I am the way. I am the way. So I much rather follow somebody that's going that to that place than to try to get directions and all that stuff. I just can't do it. He not only gives advice, he not only gives directions, he not only tells us about a way, but he is the way. Follow me, he said. And then Jesus is the truth to know. Not only he's the way to go, but he's the truth to know. He's the source of truth. He said, you want to know what truth is? Go to Jesus. Don't go to a man. The Bible says, yea, let God be true and every man a what? A liar. So he's a source of truth. He's the communicator of truth. In fact, he's the only one from whom we get truth. The Bible says that the law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. You remember what Pilate asked Jesus? He says, what is truth? What is truth? And the answer is, Jesus said, I am truth. I am truth. You want to know the truth about going to heaven? Don't ask a philosopher. Don't ask religion. Don't ask somebody's opinion. Go to the word of God. And Jesus said, I'm the truth. I'll tell you the truth. And then he's not only the way to go, and he's not only the truth to know, but he's the life to show. You know, a lot of people not showing that they're saved. Are they supposed to do that? Absolutely. Brother Bill brought it out in Titus chapter number two, didn't you? You're supposed to show the grace of God appeared to all men, teaching us, denying ungodliness and worldliness. We should live. That's showing people. Are you saved? Yeah. Paul said, prove it. Examine yourselves, prove it. Show me your faith, James says. We've well, got a lot of people saying, yeah, I'm saved. Man, I, I'm telling you, it, I kind of I kinda wish I knew how to, and I, I could, I guess. I kind of wish I knew how to get on Facebook. Man, I would have a blast. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. These people, <laughs> huh? I don't need to be on Facebook? Okay. That's what you told my mom. So anyway, these folks are saying how much they love Jesus. I'd get on there and say, well, why aren't you in church? <laughs> they would, look, I would be on Facebook with no friends. <laughs> they would defriend me or unfriend, whatever they do. I said, well, here's my last, here's my first and probably my last chance. So, so here's what I said. Jesus is the life to show. John 10 and 10. John 10, verse number, we're in the book of John, let's stay there. John chapter 10 and verse number 10. The thief, the thief, the Bible says, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Jesus said, I am come that they might have life. Life. You're really living when you trust Jesus. When you have his life, you have his life. He says you have his life and that they might have it more abundantly, more abundantly. John chapter number 11, verse number 25. Jesus saith unto her, to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. I'm the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Whosoever liveth, <coughs> excuse me, and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this. Look at John 17, John chapter 17 and verse number three. <coughs> John 17, verse number three. John 17, 3, and this is life eternal, that they might know thee, 
the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. John goes on to write in the epistles in 1 John chapter 5 and 12, I think it is. He said, he that hath the Son hath life. Are you, are you living? So, yeah, I preach, I'm living. You see me moving. But do you have life? Do you have life? Do you have his life? And so there's a clarification. But then lastly, let's go back to John 14 now. John 14. <clears throat> I want you to look. I want to point out one little word in verse number three. One little word, verse three. And if I go and prepare a place for you. Now, he's talking to his disciples, right? But we're, we're getting in on this, too. And if I go prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may. Not will, may. You know who is included? You, you know who is in, in, the, in that group of disciples? Judas Iscariot. And Jesus plainly told him, one of you shall betray me this night. One of you shall betray me. He went on to say, one of you is a devil. Not has a devil, is a devil. And so he said, if I go prepare a place for you, I'm, I'm going to come again. Now, Jesus said, if this, all of this were not true, I would have told you. So when he left, when he ascended up to heaven, it, it, I don't know if he's still doing it right now, <clears throat> but he said he was going to start. He's going to prepare, he's going to do it, a place for you. Do you think he's still preparing places? Could be. I don't know. Would he be preparing a place? Um, it, do, you, do you think maybe he's, look, he went to a cross, he died for all. Did he not? He died for all sinners. Do you think that the place in his father's house has enough mansions in it to house everyone? Yeah. Yeah. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So I'm telling you, he, he has prepared a place, I believe, for everybody. But not everybody's going. Some will go, some won't go. What's the difference? It's a word called choice. If you don't want to go, he's not going to drag you. If you want, don't want to go, he'll leave you behind. That's just the way he is. He's a gentleman. He says that where I am there, ye may be also. You may be also. I don't believe in forcing anybody to say a prayer that's supposedly supposed to get them to heaven if they don't want to pray in the first place. That's right. Come on. We've got these high-powered soul winners out there that talks to a fella, convinces a fella that he's, he's lost. Yeah, are you, are you saved? No, I'm not saved. Well, do you know that you can be saved? Okay, I know I can be saved. So what? You can tell by that when he says, so what? He's not interested. What are you supposed to do? You got to persuade people. Knowing the terror of the Lord, you persuade men. That person, well, all you have to do is just repeat this prayer. Okay, I'll repeat a prayer. Go ahead. And we go through the spiel, and God repeats the prayer. Brother Bill brought this out again um, in Sunday school. Repeating a prayer don't get you to heaven. For with, the Bible says, for with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. And then with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. There's many people that have repeated a prayer. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sin. Take me to heaven. Amen. You know what? There's one element missing in that whole thing. It's called repentance. And Jesus said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. So why preach a message on salvation? Because everybody's not saved in churches. That's why. Am I a saved preacher? You got to ask yourself that question. I can't answer that question. You got to answer yourself. Jesus knows it. You know it. Let not your heart be troubled. Is it troubled? Is it troubled because this morning you don't, you don't really know for sure. 
that heaven's your home, that Jesus is your Savior. Boy, you can be sure. And by the way, God wants you to be sure. He wants you to know for sure that when you leave this world, you'll be in the presence of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Father, Lord, we hope and pray that everyone in here saved. But if I could just say for my own thoughts, I don't think that's true. I hope it's true. I wish it's true. But Lord, if there's one here that has come to this church and maybe, maybe they have enjoyed the, the music, maybe they have enjoyed the Sunday school hour, the, the preaching, Maybe they have enjoyed it. May, maybe, Lord, it may make them feel good for some strange reason. But, Lord, we know there is the Holy Ghost of God that brings conviction upon a lost man's heart. And I pray, Lord, if there's one here under that conviction, I pray, dear God, that you would save them. Help them to realize that going to church, singing a song, giving, all of these things will never get a man to heaven. Never get a man to Jesus. But if they will trust and receive you by faith. You said you'd write their name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Give them eternal life. That they may be with you forever and ever. Father, if there's one here that fits that description, I pray that you'd save them. We ask it in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand together, would you please? Stand.